Why did they need to have a lumbar puncture? Why did you need to have it done? Yeah. Okay, so we find a lumbar puncture can be quite useful, particularly at the beginning of somebody having the condition of IIH, to help us know what the pressure is. That's the intracranial pressure or the brain pressure. And by the little needle going in, in the spine area, at the base of the spine, we can get a reading on how high the pressure is, because it will be the same really um, as in the brain. The, the, the pressure reading, on the other hand, can sometimes give us uh, a not entirely accurate result because brain pressure varies over 24 hours. So although we have a reading at one particular moment when you have your lumbar puncture done, we don't know how it then may vary over 24 hours or vary depending on what you're doing at home, whether you're coughing or at home or walking around. So it gives us a snapshot reading at one moment in time. Um, and then what we like to know is what the exact pressure reading is to help us determine whether the pressure is high. And the general thinking is that from the diagnostic guidelines, pressures above 25 should be further evaluated. But a pressure above 25 is not diagnostic always of IIH, because some people can have a slightly elevated pressure and it can just be normal for them. Normal for them. Yeah. So when we've done studies and we've looked at how pressures are in the normal population who are well, we can see it kind of follows a curve where some people have pressures that are quite low, um, even though they're very healthy, and some people have pressures quite high, even though they're otherwise completely healthy. So when we get that pressure reading, we have to interpret it in the light of everything else that's going on, like your brain scan, and your symptoms and your eye findings. And it's all of those things together that can make a diagnosis of IIH. So we look at it and if that pressure is above 25, we'll evaluate you. And there's a bit of a, a gray area between 25 and really up to 30 that we call really the gray zone because those pressures could be normal for some people, but for some people it could be elevated. Pressures below 25 tend to be more normal, but then there could be um, circumstances where a pressure reading could be falsely low. So for example in patients that have had a multiple um, attempts at lumbar puncture or a very recent lumbar puncture and then it repeated the next day, it might not give an accurate reading. And then sometimes the reading may be falsely high and it could be more than we're expecting and it's not actually IIH, something else has caused the pressure to be high. For example, sometimes the way the patient is positioned um, during the lumbar puncture with their knees compressed or the way they're breathing or the way they're holding their breath and things can falsely affect the lumbar puncture reading. So it's quite important that when we get that pressure we think, right, does this make sense with the rest of the things that is going on with the patient? Does it make sense with the examination, with the brain scan, with the eye findings? To include everything else that's going on as Absolutely. well. But Absolutely. But, uh, but the factor of uh, measuring the pressure is also important from the point of view is it can help us know if the condition is very severe. So pressures in the 40s or 50s or 60s would make us sit up and think, okay, that's really quite significantly elevated. Let's have a look how it's affecting the patient otherwise. Will I have to have multiple lumbar punctures? Well, we try and avoid that if we can. So whilst we know that some patients will, will have, unfortunately, have to have a number of different lumbar punctures, our practice here is to try and limit the number of lumbar punctures that you need. And that's really because we know that our patients are telling us that they find them uncomfortable and, and that they're not, in, you know, they're not finding it a, a, an easy part of the diagnostic process. So we try and limit how many people are having. We know that they can cause discomfort at the time of the lumbar puncture, although all efforts are made to try and reduce that, but also there can be some back discomfort for, a, for some time after the lumbar puncture in some patients, although that typically does settle very well. It's a bit like a bruise, you know, somebody kicks you on the shin or something, you feel a bruise at the site and then it settles down over a number of days. But generally we are moving away from treating IIH with multiple lumbar punctures because of the problems with the lumbar punctures, so we'd rather treat now with the other things we talked about, the medicines, the tablets and the weight loss um, modifications. So we try and use that more now to try and get the condition to go into remission rather than doing multiple lumbar punctures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you do have to do multiple lumbar, lumbar punctures, is it an easy way if there's a difficulty of doing them? Yeah, it's a good point. So. In our centre here, we have a, a very uh, skilled team of uh, registrars who tend to do the lumbar punctures, and because they're doing so many of them, they tend to be actually very good at them. But there are some patients in which it can be very difficult to find the right position to put the little needle into, and that's sometimes actually as a, as a reflection sometimes of the fact that the patients are more overweight, and it's just physically harder to feel where the bones are to know exactly where to put the needle. So it can be more difficult in IIH patients than in other patients that are having lumbar punctures. And in these circumstances, circumstances, sometimes we will use image guidance to do the lumbar punctures. So there's two types of that really. There's x-ray guidance and there's ultrasound guidance. 
In the past, we tended to use more x-ray guidance, but this involved going down to the, um, the radiologists, the radiographers, and having an x-ray image shined on your back to see where the bones are and to see where to put the needle in. But the reason we try and not do them too often is because it's giving you a dose of radiation every time you have a lumbar puncture, and that also can have complications for your health. So we're moving now to try to doing it more by ultrasound guidance, ultrasound being the technique where you put jelly, um, a bit like when the pregnant ladies have an ultrasound scan on their tummy, but it's the same thing on your back, to see where the bones are, to see where the markings are, and that's actually making our lumbar punctures uh, much easier to do in certain patients. So yeah, we do. Yeah. And we also try and make sure we use plenty of um, pain relief during the procedures and fully explain about the procedures before we do them. Yeah.